Many modern engines have their cylinder heads bolted to the block with torque to yield bolts, which need to be replaced every time they are removed. Properly applying torque to these bolts is more complicated than setting the torque wrench to the manufacturer's recommendation and turning it until it clicks. In this example, we are working on a 3100 SFI engine, engine code LG8. At the time of recording, the latest torque specification for these bolts was 44 pounds feet plus 95 degrees. Tonight we're going to be torquing these bolts to spec. In order to do this job on this engine, you're going to need a torque wrench, a torque angle gauge, a socket and adapter if necessary, something to mark the bolts when you're done torquing them, and the right information. There are different types of torque wrenches, so read the manual to figure out how yours works. The spec for the cylinder head bolt is 44 foot-pounds plus 95 degrees. This is the recommended first bolt, so we're going to start here. There's the click, so we're going to mark it. Continue to torque them in the manufacturer specified torque order, and then check them in that same order. At this point you don't actually need to use a torque wrench, in fact it's probably distracting because it'll click on you. I'm going to use a normal breaker bar, but if you don't have one, the torque wrench will do. Now on this torque angle gauge, there's a screw here, you want to open this up. Don't pull it all the way out, there's a hole here, and you stick this into there whichever way happens to work for you at the time. You're going to use this in different orientations for every single bolt, so be prepared to move it around. And you're measuring the angle that you're putting on that bolt. So you put it to zero and say we need on this engine to turn it to 95 degrees. You just put it on something, tighten the bolt to 95 degrees. All right, we're going to go back to bolt one. Start by putting this back to zero. And you can put it on the bolt any which way. But what you have to do is find a spot where you can put this, this bracket, so that when you rotate it clockwise, it's going to push against something and stay put. If it doesn't stay put, you're gonna have an inaccurate reading. You need to rotate it 95 degrees. Watch this dial go around to the 90 and then just a little bit further. On this, each of these large notches is 10 degrees. 90, 100, 110, and there's 120. So right in the middle of the 90 and the next notch. I found a spot where this reaches zero and I've got this pinned up against something. Well, this started moving around, so that's not good. All right, bolt number two. I've got this to fit very neatly into this rocker arm bolt hole, so I'll be able to just put it there and make sure this is really tight. Another good reason to check to see if you've got 90 degrees of rotation or the amount of rotation that you need is that you get a sense of where it needs to be once you're fully turned, and if this thing doesn't work on you, then you can generally get it to the area you need to. If you set up the torque angle gauge correctly, the numbers will stay put and the needle will move with the bolt. Perfect. Remember, you're turning clockwise, so imagine this turning clockwise as well. You want it to hit something immediately. If you can find something to practice on that isn't the engine that you're rebuilding, that would be really good. All right, we've completely torqued down this cylinder head and we learned how to use this torque angle gauge in the process. 